for our next problem is in regards to design of two-way slab. So using the coefficient method, design the spacing of 15 millimeter rebars along the midstrip of a 5,000 millimeter and 6,000 millimeter corner slab. The superimposed dead load is 6.8 kPa, and the live load is 8.0 kPa. The thickness is 175 millimeters. F frame C is 21 mPa. FY is equal to 420 mPa, and the unit weight of concrete is 23.5 kN over m cube. So our first step is to determine the design calls for a two-way slab. So uh, using the formula, a short span over long span <coughs> will be acquiring the uh, the value 0 0.800, 0 0.8, which is greater than 0 0.5 and not greater than or equal to 1, and which denotes that the design calls for a two-way slab. Our next step is to determine the case of the design. Uh, I'm sorry that uh, I made a mistake here. Uh, the discontinuous side should be here for the sides, and this sides here should be the continuous sides. So these uh, conditions parallel to case 4. So our next step is to calculate for the slab loads. So for the slab loads, we have W slab is equal to WC times the thickness, 23.5, right, uh, times uh, 0.175, which is the thickness here, converted to meters, so 4.1125. And to get the dead load, we'll just add uh, the W slab to the superimposed dead load, and then we get 10.10125 kPa. Then for the value of W, we'll get 1.2 DL plus 1.66. Uh, 1.6 LL, and then we get 25.895 kilonewton meters squared times the value uh, times one, and then we get 25.895 kilonewton meter. Our next step is to, since the design is continuous, consider only one meter step for the design. So we'll only consider one meter step for the design here, and then analyzing the beam, uh, we can uh, say that it deflects in this uh, manner with uh, going down, so negative moment, then positive moment, so it's going up. Then our assumption for the continuous end moment is zero. And then our next step is to look at the two-way slab coefficient tables for negative moments. We can uh, we already said that this uh, this design is case four, and that <clears throat> for our value of M is basic S over L, which is 0 0.8, and it's 0 0.8 here, and then we get the value for C S or short span 0 0.071, and C L for the long span 0 0.029. Our next step is to consider the coefficient for the negative moments for the short span. So we get CS times WS squared, and then we get 42.360 kN meter. Then for slab to be safe in flexure, it has to uh, satisfy these parameters. And then uh, 0 0.9 times 1,000. Uh, this is from the one meter strip uh, converted to millimeters. Then for 475.5, this is basically D, 175 minus 20 minus 15. The two times 21, which is f frame c times q, and then we get the value of q, which is 0 0.11018, and then we get the value for rho, which is 0 0.0554. Then compare it to rho min, uh, the two uh, equations used for rho min, and then since and uh, c, which is the biggest of all, and since it's this value here for rho. Uh, will you be using P is equal to 0 0.0554. Now, our next step is to calculate for AS, which AS is raw BB, uh, is equal to 817.15. Calculate for number of 15 millimeters rebirth and spacing for the negative uh, moment. So N is equal to here. Then we get 4.64 pieces per 1,000 millimeters. Then S is equal to 1,000 over 4.64. To four, and then we'll get the value for S, which is 216.263 millimeters. Our next step is to look for two-way slab coefficients for the positive moments. <clears throat> Here we have two tables. So uh, for case four, we have here 0 0.8. And case four again, we have the value for CDL, which is 0 0.039. And then here for case four again, and then the value for M, which is 0 0.8, we get CLL, which is 0 0.048. For C dead load and C light load. Well, uh, this table is for dead loads and this table is for live loads. So our next step is to consider coefficients for the positive short span. So basically just um, MUDL is equal to uh, 0 0.039, which is uh, CDL here, times 1.2 DL, which is 
which then 4.8, which is the S, which is S, then MUL, uh, 1.6 LL times uh, CLL here, and 4.8 squared, and then we get 25.8. And for the slab to be safe in flexure, <coughs> we will be using this formula here to <coughs> acquire the value of Q, and then for Q is equal to 0 0.063535, and then for rho is equal to <coughs> 0 0.03177. And then compare to uh, the raw mean, which is for these two equations here, we'll be acquiring, uh, we say that the raw mean is uh, greater than uh, raw. So we'll have to multiply our value of raw by four over three. So we'll get 0 0.04236. And then we'll calculate for AS and N using this value for raw. So AS is equal to raw BD, then we get so, so four. 0.81, and then for the number of uh, number, we get 64.81 over the area here, and then we get 3.5357 pieces per 1,000 meters. <coughs> Our next step is to calculate for the spacing for the positive moment and the short span, and then we get 1,000 over 3.537, which is 282.829 meters. Now we have two values for our spacing, but since I uh, since it's impractical to consider two spacings, we will only use uh, the smaller spacing of the two, which is for the negative uh, span. So we use S is equal to 216.263 millimeters. Our next problem is design of column subjected to uniaxial bending. So for this, a height of 2.6 meters is unsupported by a spiral column that's 65 millimeters in diameter. The column is bent in a single curvature and is braced against sideways. F prime C is equal to 28 MPA. F Y is equal to 3485 MPA. DL, the <coughs> load is equal to 3000 kilonewtons. And F, F load is 1300 kilonewtons. Design the column for the required 30 millimeter diameter bars to the ultimate design load strength. <coughs> so our first step is to solve for the slenderness ratio of the column. So we have L over R, which is 2600 over 0 0.25 times 625. So we get 16.378, and then we'll just convert it to 60. Our next step is to use this formula here for the ultimate load, 1.2 dead load plus 1.6 dead load. And then we'll get 5,680 5, kN. And then <clears throat> for, we'll use the value for PU here. PU is equal to C, 0 0.85 times 0 0.85 F prime C. That's AG minus AS1 plus FY times AS1. And then we'll single out AG. So we'll transfer it to this side and manipulate the equation to make it come like this. Then we'll get the value for AG, 316,692.174. Uh, and then we'll substitute it back to the equation. And then we'll get uh, the value for PG, which is 0 0.013493. Our next step is to solve for AS. And AS is basic, uh, simply PG times AG. And AS is equal to 0 0.028 times two, uh, 316 times 1692.174. So we get 8, 867.381 millimeters squared. And our last step is to solve for the number of bars using this uh, formula here uh, for the area times N times <coughs> is equal to AS. And then with this, we'll get uh, the number of bars, which is 12.545 for the spiral column. And we we'll just round it up and get 13 bars. And that's it. Uh, thank you for listening and have a great day ahead, sir.